1 Kings in the 17th chapter, as we get into the Word of God today, we're starting a series, and uh, this is part one. I don't know if it's going to be part two or three, but I know there's going to be another part next week. But it's called When the Brook Dries Up. And uh, in 1 Kings in the uh, 17th chapter, we're going to take a look at verse number one, and we're going to read through verse number seven today. But just to kind of give you a little uh, uh, insight of what's taking place, uh, Israel in verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 17, or chapter 16, the chapter before what we're about to read, in verse 33, it talks about uh, a king, the king of Israel that was by the name of Ahab. He was bad. He was a wicked king. The Bible says that he did more to provoke the Lord. Uh, God of Israel to anger than all the other kings of Israel that were before him. You know, Israel is God's people. Israel is, is God's nation. And now we have a king that is against God, provoking God, more wicked than all the other kings that were brought before him. So God raises up a prophet to come into the land by the name of Elijah. And we see this in chapter 1, that God, whenever there's a... a, a, a an evil king, evil or wickedness that goes on, God comes along and brings a prophet. God brings a solution. Uh, just kind of like as uh, those of you that were part of the, the increase home groups this last week, they were talking about uh, incre uh, increase, and, but also about being problem solvers, that God has called us to be problem solvers. God was a problem solver. Whenever there was a problem, God had a solution, and he, he, he called us to uh, solutions, and not just to say, oh, there's a problem, let's just deal with it, but there's solutions. And so we see here in chapter uh, uh, 17, verse number 1, it says, And Elijah, the Tishbite uh, of, the, uh, of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, and he comes to the king. Here's the prophet that comes and is speaking to this wicked king. As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. So he's coming along and he's speaking. He says to the king. And when, they, when, when, when a king would hear words like that, there's not going to be no rain or dew. Uh, it means that there's going to be a famine in the land. So here comes Elijah and he says, you know what? There's going to come. There's going to be a famine in the land. And then we're going to see what you're going to do about it. So he speaks these words out. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, and he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had not been no rain in the land. You see, we've been talking about increase, year of increase, and how God wants to increase in your life, and he wants you to go forward, and he wants you to uh, uh, not increase just financially, but spiritually and, and physically and mentally. And a lot of times when we go to that place, it's kind of like a, a, a pruning process because in order for increase to come, sometimes there needs to be a decrease. There needs to be that pruning process. And a lot of times we think that we're always just going to go and go and go. But sometimes God takes us to a place of saying, you know what, okay, now there's, in order for you to increase, you need to decrease in some areas. Jesus had to go down, decrease to the, the, the earth, to the, to the grave in order for him to increase to where he became the king of kings and lord of lords, defeated hell, death, and the grave. And increase, really, it's all about being in the will of God. When you are in the will of God, even though you may be in a situation that doesn't look in terms of the world, uh, a situation as increasing and God doing great things in your life, it's really increase is all about being in the will of God, doing what God has called you to do. It may not look like increase to somebody else, but if you're in the will of God, God says, you know what, you are increasing, you're growing because you're in my will, you're doing what I've called you to do, and you're growing day by day. Now, here we see that Elijah's in the, in the will of God. The word of the Lord came to Elijah, and he says, I want you go, to go to the brook, and I want you to go there. 
I want you to go to Cherith. That's, there's going to be a brook there. I'm going to provide for you there. There's going to be a, a provision. There's going to be an uh, increase. I'm going to take care of you in this situation. And, but then the brook dries up. And I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life that as I've listened and gone and felt that I was doing what God had called me to do, there was moments in my life that the brook has dried up. The brook dried up for Elijah. But then we see later on, and we'll probably take a look at this next week, how God moved them to a, a, a new place. But when we get to that place of a dry brook, sometimes we, we don't like it. We think, God, you were providing for me. God, everything was good and everything was okay. But oftentimes God takes us to that place because he wants us now to move us to that next place. He, he, he took Elijah to, to Cherith and he provided for him there and he took care of him there. And then he sent them to the to the uh, uh, widow in, in Zarephath, and we'll look at that a little bit next week. And, and God provided for him there, and then God provided for her there, but then God took him to Mount Carmel, and, and there he was, uh, uh, God provided, and he killed the 450 uh, prophets of, of Baal there. And, and God took him every place, and then once that season was up, because in, in life, there are seasons in life. I remember in 1980, right after I won my second world championship as a professional skateboarder, I was at the top. I had quit skateboarding. And I moved down to Mexico. And I thought, you know what? I've saved up a little bit of money. I'm going to go down to Mexico. My grandfather's down there. I have some family now. I'm going to have a little ranch. I'm going to start uh, 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 get some cattle, get a little horses. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down there. And this is where I'm going to go and I'm going to retire. I was 18 years old. What did I know? And so I went down there, and, you know, like I said, I had a little bit of money saved up. I was going down there, enjoying, enjoying life, and started building a, a, a home and started doing some other things and bought me a horse and got me a, a hat, got me some cowboy boots. Now look at me. No hat, tennis shoes, and a cast. <laughs> but anyway, so I went down there. But you know what? After I was there for about a year, my brook had dried up. See, I was doing good as a professional skateboarder. I was uh, being successful. I was increasing. God was doing great things. My, and, and then I moved, and I went to this place. I thought, yeah, this is where, and then all of a sudden, my brook dried up. And God was now, was moving me to a new place. So I came back to the States, and I started working for my brother, my brother's restaurant. And you would look at my life, and you would think, man, uh, Pastor Ray, your life was going down. You're, here, here you are, you're a two-time world champion skateboarder. You go down, you are going to retire, you're going to have this and that, you're going to build a home, you're going to cattle, you're going to ranch, you do all these things. Now that brook dried up, and now God moved you back. Now you're working fast food at your brother's restaurant. You know, God is decreasing you. How is your life increasing? But in all reality, sometimes when we, our, our, our brook dries up and we decrease, in all reality, God is getting us ready for that increase in our life. Because if we don't allow God to, to, to do what he needs to do in our lives so we can stay in the will of God, we will miss out on the very future and the very hope that God has for us. Because it was at that restaurant when this lady by the name of May came into that restaurant and told me about Jesus Christ, where I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And it was because of that dry season, it was because of that dry brook when I was down in Mexico living my life that I had to come back and I had to work at my brother's restaurant. Even though it was fast food, it was there that God had a plan to come and speak into my life. And if I would have been still professional skateboarder, I may not have been able to receive and been receptive to the word of God at that time. But because of that dry brook, God took me to a place where he wanted to speak to me in my life. That was there when I gave my life over to Jesus Christ. It was there when I got planted in the church. It was there that I met my wife and, 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 we, and we have two wonderful children. We continued our life. But if it wasn't have been for that dry place, if things would have kept on flowing down in Mexico, I would have stayed down there. I probably would have gotten married down there. I probably, who knows if I would have given my life to the Lord. And Pastor Donna makes a joke about that, about me being engaged three times, but that was fact. But in all reality, I'm glad that that brook dried up. 
You, sometimes we don't want our brooks to dry. Sometimes uh, 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 we assume that if our brook dries up, that, 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 uh, that we're not obedient to God. And, and we, sometimes we think that when our brook is flowing, when, when God takes us to a place and it's continuing to flow, that, 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 yes, it's God. But when the brook dries up, we say, oh, no, it must not be God. We must be in sin. We must be out of the will of God. Did it mean Elijah was in sin? No. Was he out of the will of God? No, he was in the will of God. Did he displease God? No, he didn't. It meant that God had another place for him. He had another plan for him. Elijah was uh, uh, put his trust in God and not in the brook. You see, sometimes we put our trust in the brook, in the provision we have now, where everything is going good now, and then if that brook dries up, we think, oh, God, where were you? What did I do? Why am I, uh, am I in sin? Did I make the wrong decisions? But in all reality, just because the brook dries up doesn't mean that you're in sin. It just means that God wants to take you to a new place. And I think sometimes when, when things are good, when things are flowing, you know, you know we, we don't want to move forward. We don't want to increase. But I think God takes us and dries up that brook because he says, I have something better. I want to increase your life. But the brook has to dry up first to get you to that next place. You see, the brook Cherith was God's special place for Elijah. What was it? It was a place that God supplied water where nobody else had water. It was a place that God provided bread when there was no food, when food was scarce, when there was a famine in the land. And one day, that brook dried up. One day, the ravens didn't show up anymore. He was waiting out there and just saying, okay, uh, God, you know what? God is, uh, God is good. And, and scholars say that that was probably about a year after he spoke that, that the famine was going on, that, that uh, he was uh, provided uh, bread and, and water from the book that God provided for him. So can you imagine after a year, you think, oh, man, this is kicked back. God is so good. I'm doing And all of a sudden you're waiting, getting a little hungry, God. It's 6 a.m. Usually you have their, uh, my meal here, God. Where, where, where's my meal? And the raven didn't show up. Oh, at least I have some water. When everybody else is out, at least I have some. It goes down to the brook, and all of a sudden there's a trickle. Not even enough to, to get a drink out of. What's going on? Why is this taking place? Everything Elijah, that Elijah had relied on was gone. But the only thing that was left was God. You know, sometimes we rely on the provision that we have right now so much that when it's gone, we even forget about God. Because we think, oh, well, I'm providing. I don't have to have faith. It's always there. I don't have to worry about anything. It's always there. But Elijah had God. See, uh, your, your, your brooks, your, your cherished place, your cherished uh, uh, situations aren't going to last forever. Because God has seasons and God has growth and God wants to increase in your life. You see, after Pastor Donna and I, we got married and, and uh, I, I, I started skateboarding again and got into ministry. I started going to churches and giving my testimony. And then God asked if, about, uh, uh, began to speak to me about becoming a youth pastor. My, my pastor asked me, and, and for 14 years we were youth pastors. And the brook was flowing. We took the youth ministry from 12 and, and, and into about 1,200 that would come weekly and many different services throughout the week. We, I had an associate youth pastor. I had staff. Uh, my, my youth ministry was bigger than our church that we have here. And the brook was flowing. We had conferences. Actually, we, we, the first conference that we had, we started an internship program in the youth ministry that now I think even the church, they're continuing to have the internship program. Plus, the church has an internship program. Uh, we, the brook was flowing. Last week they had, uh, I don't know, over 1,000 and 2,000 kids that were at a youth conference. And, you know, a lot of our youth were, were a part of that, that, that we had sown seed. But eight years ago, eight and a half years ago, the brook dried up. 
it was time for us to, to move on. And as God says, uh, spoke to our pastor again and said, you know I, that we want to send you out to the desert. We want you to plant a church. We want you to become the senior pastor. I'm thinking, I don't know about this. You know, I, I'm comfortable with the brook the way it is, but you know what? The brook dried up. We could have stayed there and we could have milked it. We could have uh, uh, probably took that ministry down to the ground because the brook dried up. That favor was gone for us to have with youth. You know, a lot of times now uh, working and dealing with youth ministry, you know, the, the favor is lifted. I could preach to them, but you know what? If they're messing around, you know, it's like I don't have the patience that I used to, even though I didn't have a lot of patience back then. I, we had, but at that time, the brook was flowing, and it was a new season to say, okay, God, your provision was in my life, not only provision in terms of, of, of financial provision or what we did, but our also spiritual provision. It dried, and it was a place that God brought us down to a place of, okay, now there's a new season. There's a new place. There's increase that I want to do in your life, even though you say, well, what about the, you know, the increase that God has brought, is, has brought us to this place of ministering to his families and seeing God move and seeing God do some great things. That, but, that, but that cherish, that, the cherith, uh, 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 that brook cherith moment isn't going to last forever. One day your brook will dry up, and it's not that God is mad at you. It means that God wants to increase your life. God wants to take you to a new place. He wants to bring a new brook. He wants to bring a new avenue your way. Maybe that cherith moment is that special friend that you're trying to hold on to. You're trying to hold on to. You're trying to hold on to. And God says that brook is dried up. And you just say, but they've been my friend for 10 years. They've been my friend since I was a kid. And God's saying, you know what? This brook is dried up. You are going to a new level. They're going to a different level. Their, their lives are changing. Their lives are moving. You're going on with God. They're not going on with God. And it's just saying that, okay, that relationship, you know what? It may have dried up. That friendship. Maybe that bank account that you had and you relied on a, a special uh, income that was coming in. And pretty soon the brook dried up. I remember there was a time. As a professional skateboarder, there was a there was a uh, 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 big uh, clothing company that was given monthly to my skateboard ministry, and I would always receive that check in the mail, check in the mail, check every month. It would be deposited. Every month it would be deposited. All of a sudden, that when the uh, the year ended, they came to me and says, "You know what? The brook is dried up. You know, things are tough, things are hard, but you get comfortable." And your bank account may say, oh, this is good, this is good. And all of a sudden, it may dry up. But it doesn't mean that, that that life is over with. Maybe it's that job security. You have that job security, and you want to keep that job, so you're just kind of maintaining, and you're going through, and pretty soon that, that brook dries up. Maybe you're at that place, and you're in a ministry, and you're, like, doing that ministry, and for some reason, you're, you, it's at that place where you're kind of like, oh, you're not... Imagine, uh, imagining, you're not dreaming, you're not believing God for uh, new things in that ministry. Maybe that ministry has dried up. Maybe that brook cheth has dried up. And it doesn't mean that life is over. It doesn't mean that ministry is over. It doesn't mean that your bank account is over. It doesn't mean that those friendships are over. It just means that God is saying, now I want to take you to a new place. Just like he did with Elijah. He says, Elijah, just because this brook dried up doesn't mean that life is over. It's just beginning. I'm going to take you to Zarephath. I'm going to take you to Mount Carmel. You're going to, you're going to uh, address those, those false prophets. They're going to come down. 450 of them are going to die. And you're going to go to new places. You're going to do miracles. But if you stay here, what good is it going to do? You're the only one that's going to get fed. You're the only one that I'm going to provide for. But I want you to go off because I have something greater. But I have to dry up the brook. So you realize that there's something greater ahead. You see, Elijah's security vanished in a matter of a day. It just was gone. His provision was there one day, and it was gone the next. I don't know about you, but I'm sure probably a lot of you in this place, you were, you, you've lost a job. You're wondering how you're going to pay the rent. You're going to be evicted. You're going to lose your car. One day you were doing good. Uh, uh, a few years ago with the financial crisis, with the, with the, with the real estate 
market. There's so many people that one day their brooks were flowing. We, our brook was flowing. And then all of a sudden, it dried up. You know, people are still here today. People that push through, people that believe God. You know, sometimes we just rely and say, oh, God, this is my only avenue of income. This is my only avenue uh, of resource. This is my only avenue. But, you know, your, your, your brook may dry up. But it doesn't mean that life is over with. It doesn't mean that God is mad at you. It means that God is just trying to take you to a, a, a new place. You know, there's some, some important lessons that, that we need to see that Elijah, you know, he didn't cry. He didn't pout. He didn't say, oh, God, what are you doing? But there's some things that, 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 that he knew. One of them was this, that something better was coming. If God is going to dry up your brook, it doesn't mean that he's going to take you backwards so you continue to go backwards, but he wants to, to take you forward. That there's something better. Obviously, God had something better for me when, I, when, when my brook dried up in Mexico when I, 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 I didn't have no more finances and I had to come back to the States and I had to work uh, uh, fast food and I worked there with my brother's restaurant. Obviously, he had something better for me and that's where I met my wife. And because of that, we've been married 30 plus years. God is doing great things. But God wants to dry up your brook so oftentimes to get you to a new place where it's, it's going to be something better. That God wants to do something better, that something better is going to come. But if we have the attitude is like, oh, no, I'm going to pout. I can't, what am I going to do? I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to wait. I'm going to die. Instead of getting up and say, okay, God, what do you want from me? Where do you want me to go? What, what, where's, the, where's my new avenue of, of, uh, of, of provision, God, from you? Where's that new avenue of ministry? Where's that new avenue? What, what Spark that, that vision on the inside. Let me have that passion. But he knew that there was going to come a day. You know, I'm sure that he probably looked back and said, oh, man, I just love Cherith. It's, it was a great place. And, you know, I was just kicking it there by the brook and things were going good. And sometimes we could look back and say, oh, wasn't that, wasn't that a good time? But imagine if he would have stayed there. You know, maybe the move of God that happened and he wouldn't have been able to uh, mentor Elisha who came along and wouldn't have been able to, to uh, uh, come and challenge King Ahab and, and Jezebel and all those wickedness, all that wickedness, if he would have stayed where he was. God wanted to do something great. He probably looked back, oh, man, what if I would have, you know, I, I look back, and what if I was, still had my Porsche and I still had my, my roof down and still doing this and I still do that? What if I still would be world champion or this and that? You know, I, I would have been missing out on the opportunity to impart into thousands and thousands and thousands of youth over 14 years if I would have stayed in the, in, in, in the brook would have continued to flow as a world champion skater, as the brook would have continued to flow in, in, in that area. But you know what? That brook dried up and I had to move on which brought me to a better place. I look back, but I don't miss that place. I just know that God had me to get to that place of moving on. See, the problem with the cheriths, the brook cheriths in our lives is this. It gets us to a place of being comfortable. We get comfortable because we know that our income is secure. We know that it's going to come from this resource. We know that it's going to come from this place. We know that it's, and we just kick back. We don't dream anymore. Uh, you know, our faith has become where we used to believe God for just provision every day that he had to believe God. And then all of a sudden, now, you know what, now God, you've been providing for a week. I don't have to have faith anymore because I know you're going to come through for me, God. And we become comfortable. And how many times in, in our lives that we get to that place where we become comfortable? You see, when you stay by the brook too long, you get to that place where you may love the brook more than the God who gave the brook to you. See, when we stay at that place, I'm going to say it again, when you stay by the brook too long, you may love the brook more than God who gave you the brook. You love the provision, you love what's going on, but in all reality, we forget about God because the provision's there. 
You see, God is going to do some new things for us as a church. I'm going to share a little bit more, but we're at that place where God is beginning to speak to us about his provision and how God wants to do some things here at this church and what he wants us to do and not just to say, oh, let's just have church and just have services and just rely upon the tithes and offerings. But we're looking to do some things this year. We have our miracle offering, our, Chris, our Easter miracle offering that we do every year. And those of you that are new, maybe you weren't here last Easter, but every year at Easter uh, we do a, a miracle offering. And because Jesus gave his best, we believe that it's an opportunity for us as believers to come and, and give our best. And so as we prepare, there's a couple things that we're going to be doing. That's just Jesus, he brought his body and he gave his best. And that's what we're believing as believers. But every year we have specific things in children's or youth or, or expansion or different things that we believe that miracle offering is for. But one of the things is, is I believe that God wants for us is to, to um, take the lobby that we have and put in a little coffee shop. Now, we're not sure exactly how that's going to come. We don't have all the details. We're working on that. We're working on researching it. Not just a coffee shop for the, for, for the church when we have church services, but to have it as a place where people can go and they could get Wi-Fi. They could get good coffee, and they could, they, they could come and, uh, during the week, and they could hang out there and, and, and meet there, and, 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 but at the same time be a source of income for the church. Because why just believe on the brook that we've had in the past instead of thinking, how can we generate income for the church? There's a lot of people that go and they hang out. My, even my son, he'll go to uh, one of the coffee shops in the area and he'll go and he'll do his work. You see, these days a lot of people, they'll go to a coffee shop and do their work. They don't go to offices. They don't go to, 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 to have rental space. But we have this space here and it's just sitting during the week. And if we're able to open it up and maybe have uh, um, maybe music or entertainment throughout the week or different things, but we're looking into researching all that because, because yes, we've had favor with our landlord here. Yes, we've had God do some great things within us, but you know what? Even though we've had that favor, we can't become comfortable with that. We know that there's going to be a time that the rent will increase. Are we ready for that increase? Are we ready for that brook to dry? If, if, uh, are we ready to, to, to be able to just say, okay, let that happen? Instead, let's be proactive as a church and say, what can we do? And I know that Andy and Lori, Andy uh, uh, is a part of a, a, a coffee company and good coffee. He knows about coffee. He could talk to you about coffee. And it's not about me saying, oh, Patrick, you can start a coffee shop. I, you know what? My coffee is, I'll order it. I'll do my little thing at home or whatever, but I don't know the ins. You know, he knows the business about coffee. How many cups of coffee and this and that and, and getting things ready. But that's one of the things that we are believing for, for our miracle offering. Because we don't want to be at the place where we're just relying upon the tithes and offering. Yeah, we, we need everybody to be involved. We need everybody to get involved to be tithes, tithers of the church. But why not look into other avenues of how we could receive income and get income as a church? And it might not be at first a full-fledged, blown, and blown out because it would be a lot of investment, a lot of money. But who knows? If, if we're able to gather together as a church, maybe we could do what we need to do. But, but, but Andy is, is working with us to make this happen. But I, I believe that, that in our lives when we sense maybe that the brook is drying, you sense that, you know what, in your spirit that, that something is taking place. God, how is the next place? Where is that income going to come? Where is that resource going to come? See, those of you who, who know that maybe you're an uh, 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 your employee of a, uh, of a business and you know that that business hasn't been doing good, then you know what, you better start looking and say, how can I uh, get some other resources? And that's what I want to do as a church, as a pastor. Because God has taken us through some amazing seasons. God has done some great things. He brought us into this facility with, with really uh, 
basically with no money down. Yeah, we raised money for the sound system and the projectors and, and chairs and seats and different things like that. But in all reality, all the build out, God gave us favor. God brought provision. But I don't want to just rely on God and say, oh, God, God, this and this. And I want to say, God, I don't want to just sit back at the brook until it's totally dried up. But I want to be proactive, God. I want to believe you for some great things. I want to believe you, God, that this church it, it can do some things that it doesn't have to just rely upon the tithes and offerings. Yes, you need to give. Do you know why you need to give? So you can be blessed. Many people don't give, and they wonder why they're not blessed. It, 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 even if we had a million dollars, if we even had $10 million in the bank, we would sell, still say every week, it's time for tithes and offerings. You need to give. Why? Because it doesn't mean that just because we're blessed doesn't mean that you're going to be blessed. You need to give on your own just as we as a church give on our own in each and every one of us because that's the principle of God. So that's kind of where we're going. Next week we're going to take a look at, see the brook dried up, but God said, okay, now I'm sending you to Zarephath. There, there's a widow, not a rich person. There's a widow there that needs you, and you're going to ask, and she's going to provide for you, and then you, in turn, because she's going to provide for you, God says, I will provide for her, and the Bible says that they were both blessed. If, if Elijah would have stayed there saying, God, you need to come through. God, you've come through in the past. Where's the raven? A month later, I'm starving, God. I'm thirsty, God. Where's the raven? If he would have stayed there, that widow would have died. He would have died. But God says, I'm moving you to a new place of provision. God is going to do some great things over the, the weeks ahead, over the years ahead at this rock church. As we learn that as that brook dries sometimes, God, where is the next step? Where is the next direction? Where is the next place that you are leading us for that provision? And in that provision that you provide for us, we will be able to be a blessing to others, just like Elijah was to the widow. Amen?